What's up, everybody? Uh, Mark and Verona here again for another uh, impromptu podcast reaction breakdown thing. How you feeling, Verona? How you doing? I'm feeling great. How are you? Uh, <laughs> I am. You know what? I'm good. I definitely like like we were talking about. I'm definitely feeling the uh, effects of uh, being a small business owner, um, but. I, I never complain about it because I get to do fun stuff like this. Okay, I do complain about it, but <laughs> I try to keep it in check. We record I just did. <laughs> yeah. But I, I try to keep it in check because I remember that I get to do stuff like this for a living, which is really cool. Exactly. Um, and people seem to people seem to really enjoy the last one. So for anybody watching this, um, Verona and I, we did like sort of a reaction analysis podcasty thing of Ginger Pisces, Ginger's song Pisces. Yeah. Um, and it was it was a lot of fun. It was it was crazy. Did you see some of the feedback and some of the yeah, like, the and view people count we got I think on that they, they really loved it. And it was not like the the goal was not to make an hour long podcast. We were supposed to make like the us usual 20, 30 minutes, but we just it was just so interesting to talk with you like more in depth for the first time. So yeah, it was really really yeah. nice. So let's just do it again. And uh, I think uh, yeah. I think people like that I'm actually discovering all that harsh vocals, like this new journey that I'm on. <laughs> yeah, I think I think so too because you know one of the one of the fun things about like having you on the channel and having you as like part of the team is that like obviously you've heard metal before you you you've you know you live on planet Earth, um, but like kind of getting to explore it in a new way and also for me like I've always been like uh like a proponent like a fan of pop music sometimes you know historically in the metal world people are like not always it's a lot better now as we're finding with these bands but you know mm -hmm. even like five six years ago like a lot of people in the metal world were like pop is dumb and i was like hold on pop is pretty cool but as we have discovered i don't know shit about it i just think it's neat um <laughs> you know what i mean like i'm i'm open to it and i like it but like knowing about pop like like i do about metal there's a it's it's a wide world so like the the sharing that we've had going mm -hmm. on has been kind of cool. It's kind of fun, mean, I think. Pop is such a word. Like it's it's it's. What does that mean? It doesn't even mean anything in my sense because pop, yeah, is just what's trendy right now. But because like if you remember mm -hmm. early two thousand, pop was actually rock. Like I would like Evanescence was playing on the radio, followed by Panic at the Disco. I mean. It wasn't as and now pop is like really uh, R and B disco oriented. So I mean it's it depends and now it's even country oriented like the Beyonce yeah. song. So I mean what is pop? It's like so that's what I mean. Like when people say oh you do pop, yeah, but that means I I'm understanding all the genres, and yeah, because it's basically like you need to understand every style and then you just make it a little bit more approachable with like catchy melodies but basically it's that's what i so sometimes pop is just i don't i don't like this label it's too yeah it's too broad you know what i kind of think of it as i've uh i've used this analogy before i don't think i've ever used it on the channel but for me like a lot of the genre terms like like if somebody was to say like i'm a pop singer to me that's like saying like oh i'm a northern hemispherian like Okay, well, like the northern hemisphere of the entire globe, that's really broad. Like, okay, we all have winter. We all have winter roughly at the same time. But, you know, so and that's a really good example. Like if somebody says I'm a pop singer, like my first thought is like more information needed. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Because it's <laughs> it, it's uh, like and the same is true with metal. If somebody tells me they're a metal vocalist, I'm like, okay, are you a metal vocalist? like uh spencer the singer of ice nine kills or are you a metal vocalist like dickie allen of infant annihilator which these are all things that if you're not familiar with you're going to become familiar with yeah so you're going to have to make it's a lot of fun discover them yeah yeah and that's actually why i'm excited to show you uh spirit box uh circle with me this, this specifically this one take performance because one thing that i think is really interesting is that in the past we talked about this briefly um in the past over the past like maybe five, six years, we've really seen pop and rock and metal kind of coming together. They separated very distinctly. Like in the 80s and 90s, they were all, no, we're very, very separate. And mm. now they're starting to sort of come back together. And I think the fusion is going really well. And so for me, when a lot of people are like, oh, what's a good example of pop and metal 
being equal, not like, oh, we're a metal band with like popular influences or, oh, we're, uh, you know, this is a pop group with metal influences. It's like, no, these sounds are existing equally. I think Spirit Box is a really good place to start. Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that Courtney is an, a, is a, an awesome vocalist. You, I don't know if I don't think you've heard this song, but I'm sure you've heard at least of Spirit Box before. Is that correct? Not much, no. I think you're gonna like it. I, I think just you're saw the like thumbnail. I'm with... like, oh, she has nice hair. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the, but I mean, blue... so I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see like how it blends like pop and metal. Like, is it gonna be? Is it gonna be the tone? Is it gonna be the melodies? Because of course, the mm -hmm. the arrangements are gonna be metal, I guess. So okay, yeah, I can't wait. So let's. Uh... There's gonna be a lot of that. A lot of that. A we can lot just jump of right. the, everything I just mentioned. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, are we it's ready? Be, it's yeah, I think we're ready. And uh you're in control of the video. So yes. um feel free to pause it, make any observations you want. People love hearing insight from vocal coaches like us. So mm -hmm. any any observation you have will be appreciated by somebody. Okay, right? and if you, um, you have stuff to say, raise your hand. <laughs> I'll pause. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Let's go. Okay, let's go. I was just about to say that's a good spot. So um <clears throat> I really hear the what you were saying, like the pop influences. Like of course she surprised me with her harsh vocals right at the <laughs> right at the start. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh but then the first verse, like she's singing so softly, like that's that's pretty modern, I think, for rock because just think of like usually rock venues or stuff like you you have to sing loud because the band is so loud on the stage. So like the vocal technique mm -hmm. was kind of, um, yeah, people were just kind of shouting in the mic a little bit like early, but, but then of course she has yeah. a very great microphone right now. So she's allowing herself mm -hmm. to sing softly, breathy, um, kind of like a Billie Eilish vibe, you know, like super, super soft. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. And then the, the chorus, we can hear her full, like, full tone and and she has a nice mezzo voice like usually people go super high like in chorus in rock but now it's like she she doesn't like she, i mean she respects her range it's not so high mm -hmm. and but it's it's powerful but it's still round like she doesn't scream it's so yeah very good and it's catchy i have the melody na, 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 i have the melody in my yeah there's a good hook there <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I you've touched on a couple things that I think are uh not only indicative of like some of the changes that are happening just in the genre uh overall, but also some of the things that are interesting with uh Courtney here. And I think one thing that you mentioned is she has respect for her range, but also I get the vibe whenever I listen to her singing, I hear such confidence not just in her tone, but in the choices she makes. Mm -hmm. Like you mentioned like in choruses, people, you know, the song goes to dum Bam, and the song gets huge. So people they want to belt or they want to scream or they want to uh get more aggressive. But she stays in that soft 
da 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 and that creates this entire new feel like the song would that would normally be a section of the song that would make people go crazy but i feel like that's a section of the song because of her singing that then puts people almost like in like sort of a meditative like like flying through outer space sort of vibe and i if i because i've heard her belt before she she has a very good belt she doesn't use it as much these days which is kind of like in my opinion because it's so good she has acid Um, reflux like me (laughs) like me you know or or you know (laughs) at the same time though at the same time yeah it is it is very hard on the belt um you know, but at the same time, if she had belted this chorus, maybe we wouldn't be having the same conversation about it. Maybe we. So it's 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 a smart choice on her part. Um, and you can really hear that. Like, if you like this song, I would encourage you to go back and listen to some of their earlier stuff. Like she has uh, they have a song called Rule of Nines where she starts with a belt and then she'll descend and then it turns breathy. You know, hmm. so she changes the connectivity of her chords. She changes the weight of her voice, um, which is really, really quite fascinating. Um, and she has a nice like um, vertical like placement, you know, like lower larynx. Yeah, that is not common. Like when we were anal- analyzing Ginger, uh, the singer, she had a more like typical pop rock placement, like middle high larynx, like a little not shouty, but like, you know, a little more thin and her it's almost like it's not classical, but it's like classical inspired in the way that it's vertical and like round. What do you think mm-hmm. about that? I no, I totally agree. I totally agree in that her 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 voice tends to she is much more willing and comfortable embracing the natural darkness in her mm-hmm. voice. Um mm-hmm. rather than that. like brightening it brightening it up and and pushing it forward. Now, for the for the viewers, um can you kind of explain what you mean like in any terms between like broadness and roundness? Like I know what you're talking about, of course. Um, yeah, so, but can I mean, you kind of describe those differences? Yeah, there's a lot of ways that you can change your tone. So, for example, someone who would have a tiny voice like that, like naturally just really bright and uh, like you feel your voice is, is just doesn't have a lot of depth in it. So the first trick I would do, uh, I would give is like to change the larynx position so you can place your hand here and just just yawn and you're gonna feel your adam's apple or your larynx or whatever it's just gonna but don't move your hand like it should be just on the on the neck Mm -hmm. drop yeah it drops it's like an elevator and usually the larynx it kind of follows the pitch so if you do like oh you're gonna see that your larynx follows your notes but Mm -hmm. sometimes it does its job a little too well, you know? Like, when you're on a high note, it's going to be already at the last the last floor, like, of the <laughs> elevator, you yeah. know? But you're like, whoa, yeah, yeah. bro, like, I wish I could have more space. So you just need to, instead of raising your larynx super fast, you need to teach it to, like, yes, it's going to follow the pitch, but just slower. So you're going to have more room. Mm-hmm. So, like, instead of... I'm, like, kind of stuck with my high larynx. I'm yawning a bit. Oh, da, 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 da. Oh, already it's like, I, uh, do I have the lyrics? Oh, yeah, I got them. Uh, but no, <laughs> I <laughs> don't know what what paragraph it is. Anyways, but you, you hear like high lines, low lines. You can exaggerate it. Like, I sometimes I give mm. an exercise like do a larynx that is too low. Do like just the opposite so that you are mm-hmm. too dark. And you stay there, like you could sing your whole song very, 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 like much too dark. And then you just sing it normally, and there's gonna be like, it's gonna be loosened a little bit. So it might be yeah. just, it might be instead of really high, it might just be there. And that's all mm-hmm. we, we needed, you know? I don't know if it was clear. Well, we d- <laughs> But if you wanna know, yeah, so- I'm giving list, uh, I'm a vocal coach who can take lessons with me, and I can teach you all about that. <laughs> well, we, so. You know, back back when we were thinking about bringing you bringing you on the team, and you gave me some singing lessons. That's one of the exercises that we did. Yeah, you know, that's one of singing, the first ones. Bah, yeah, bah, 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 bah. just getting like too dark so that when you remove that, you're more you're more neutral and more in control. Yeah, so I know I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. and it was very useful. It was a very useful exercise. 
Um, anything else you notice? There's some stuff that I could point out, but anything else you notice about her singing voice or 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 interesting things you want to point out? Uh, I mean, for sure, she was like pretty legato, so like not cutting. But that's I think like the meditative vibe that you were talking about. Like the the drums are super intense, like everything's like moving so fast and behind her and she's just like floating so linking the mm -hmm. words i'm saying this i think in every video that we've done for cardavox but like people usually don't <laughs> do that <laughs> uh -huh. even yeah. sometimes like i'm coaching uh, i had a student last night it's not even for a singing lessons it's for a conference she's gonna give a big 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 conference um and oh, we're okay. placing her voice for that and all the sentences that she's like she if you want to make more impact, I mean, now I'm thinking of my words, so I cannot do that. But when you're learning your text by heart, you have time to also have like a radio host voice and you're just linking your words. So it makes more, I don't know, it just, it's just more beautiful for the listener. So that's what she, she's doing, you know, instead of, uh, nah, 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 uh, let me feel the weight of a martyr. I don't know if it's the... Is it the good verse? <laughs> it could all that, yeah, those, be those, yours if you, you echo birds of prey. <laughs> See what I mean? I got a lot of students yeah. doing that. <laughs> so yeah. feel the weight. Feel if I were to talk like I sing, it would have it would be a little too smooth. But for the singing voice, that's what you want. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that's that what you're noticing is a huge marker of hers. You know her her vocals like her vocals like like enshroud you and put you in like this state of like trance and mystery and then she roundhouse kicks you in the face um yeah. with, her, <laughs> with her screams you know which you're gonna you heard a little bit of it at the beginning but i i'm saving it for uh i want to talk about the screams anyway i'm giving too much away i'm giving too much okay so do i so keep, I'll shush. Do, do we keep listening or do did you want to add something on that first part let's keep going let's keep going let's keep going but it's impressive because last thing the first 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 verse it's so breathy that it's impressive that she's able to go back to like a super like vocal cords, like, cause breathy is like, eh, the chords are a little rigid. And then like, she comes back so quickly to a round sound, not breathy anymore. Just that I'm impressed. Okay. Let's keep going. Yeah. Okay, pause it there. Very good. Yeah. Um, also, um, we might have to do that again because it's not playing in the stream for me um, at all. Oh. Okay, let's do it. Again. I can hear it through your. I can. I can hear it through your headphones. Um, so it Ludo, was, it was when recorded you edit this, on my end. Do Do you want to? Yeah. Keep going. It, it, well, we should fix it because I gotta hear it to okay, you know make comments streaming. about it. Um, sure. And then Ludo can cut that part out. Okay, so let's just listen to that. Do you see it? Yeah, go ahead and push play. Okay, so we were there. It is just And 
think something's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Something is coming. But <clears throat> let's let's I want to I want to point out one of my favorite things about the way that she projects her voice. Right. Mm -hmm. So building on the what you were talking about earlier, you know, verticality, we think a lot about verticality when we think about rock and even a lot of metal vocals. Right. So if if you know, and I'm just going to riff here, I'm just going to do some some just goofy stuff here. But, you know, oftentimes when we're thinking about like projecting or or even belting. We want to be like kind of like, you know, a lay, like showing the teeth. There's a smile. There's, you know, like, hey, guys, one thing I always do with my students. Granted, again, I'm teaching them more to scream. If they want to sing beautifully, I send them to you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm just like, they're like, oh, can you teach me to sing? Get out of my face. Go <laughs> <Yeah>. away. Um, <laughs> you know, well, you still understand. Um, you but still often. Understand how it works. Exactly. Exactly. Because a lot of the base concepts are the same. So like when, when we're doing a lot of screams, you know, we're often not always we're here. Hey, hey, guys, what's going on? I'll have them say like, hey, welcome to Chili's. Right. Hey, yeah. Right. And they'll do that. But with her, her, her mouth almost has like a sort of pouty shape. You know, she drops the jaw. Her jaw often goes a little bit forward, but her her mouth kind of does like this. Shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a very. That's a very interesting way. Maybe this is more common in worlds I'm not familiar with, but I feel like I've never really seen that before. Really? That's what I teach like, all the time. That's oh, the really? shape I'm oh, teaching okay. all the freaking, like, I'm like against this. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 just have that. Oh, yeah, I just woke up. Oh, I'm yawning. This is the shape. So that's what I meant by vertical. Okay. Yeah. No, you okay, don't want to sound like that. Well, tell me. Na, 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 na. Because you sound like a little annoying, like hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll the see. screaming we'll see. It, it works, but that's something it's gonna be very different from the uh, singing lesson yeah, to the screaming lesson. So yeah, we want vertical because even like you, you can cheat your vowels like on higher notes, and this is like a very expensive trick that I'm gonna say here. Okay. So, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so like sure. uh, eh. There's a couple. I'm not gonna say all the vowels. You have to take lessons with me, because it's a secret uh, weapon. But like the e eh <laughs> vowel is so annoying on high notes that we completely change it to a e uh vowel. Interesting. Yeah. So uh yeah, like yeah yeah yeah. It goes yeah yeah yeah. Mm, you still I hear e, eh, but I'm thinking uh uh uh. And there's a couple of other vowels like that. If you want to sound like less annoying. If you want to if you want the sound of the annoying person, it's fine. It's an aesthetic artistic choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's really interesting because like in a lot of the in a lot of the, uh, of music that that I listen to that I'm I'm more like well versed in, it's like it's like they start with like that overly annoying like, you know, eh hey, yeah yeah, too much, too much. But then bring it down hey, yeah, 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 yeah. and then like it's still that smile but it's not so bad so it's like it's like the the round versus the like the soft versus the sharp the it, it's it's really fascinating it's really there's interesting a, there are a couple um, of techniques that we say they're wrong like i would not warm up my voice like that that after we put some wrong stuff just to put some spices, you know, it's like the breathiness. I would never war mm -hmm. war uh, warm up breathy, never. Right. But I right, do right, right. sing yeah. breathy sometimes, like she's doing on the verse. But this is like a wrong thing that you do because of artistic choices. So it's a little bit the same, like when you're doing. Eh, if you wanna, if you wanna sabotage your sound, but it's an artistic choice, like just a tiny bit, you can. I'm doing it sometimes and it gives like it's less polish, it's less yeah, round, but sometimes you don't want it too round. So it, it really depends. So you have to learn the very good way and then to, so remove all your bad habits. That's what I'm teaching. Like you mm -hmm. remove the bad habits, you learn the vertical way, good projection, comfort, 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 comfort. Like you never mm -hmm. feel a thing in your throat. That's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. A lot of my students, when I tell them that, like, you shouldn't feel a thing, they're like, what? <laughs> really? Let's, yeah. Yeah. You it, shouldn't. A hundred percent. It's probably different than the it, harsh vocals, but I, I don't know. because no, 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 no. Okay. It's one, it's one million percent the same. So okay. what I just told you about this, like, eh, I would not do that with a student. 
for a long time mm. because like the the general methodology that I use and that a lot of people use to to uh, um, create harsh vocals is exactly what you just described. Okay. You start with comfort, comfort and control, comfort and control, nothing else at all. Right. And then once you have comfort and control, then sometimes you do something kind of crazy, something over exaggerated. But that's where we have a responsibility as vocal educators to say like, hey, we're going to use an intentionally exaggerated sound, not because we want to stay here, but we're going to find our way back to the middle. Exactly. So no, 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 I would never, mm -hmm. you would never hear me in a lesson one being like, okay, here we go. <laughs> like you would never hear that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. You would never hear I that. I mean, I don't want to um, judge. I'm just like, <laughs> okay, okay. So we're, mm -mm. it's, it's kind of the same. It uh, sounds, it sounds like our, our, our methodology is almost point for point the same. Um, it's just, you know, like for example, a lot of my students, when they want to learn like a really cool scream, I'm like, okay, that scream's awesome. Our first goal is this. <clears throat> and they're like, that doesn't sound cool. And I'm like, I know. Um, <laughs> you know I mean? Hey, but ju because I just want to point out, I had two lessons with you. I have to send voice notes to the, the last, the second class was harder on my brain. Oh, and, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, uh, but I'm now able to have a little r bit of raspiness while I sing that doesn't hurt. Hey, it kind Steve, of there happens you go. more often and I'm like, mm, I'm loving it. So yeah, it's very nice. Very so nice. let me, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is going to be an interesting question. Um, and it's going to be a little bit off track, but people loved the podcasting nature of the first video. So yeah. let's embrace it. <laughs> let's just get off track. That's our uh, branding now. <laughs> yeah. 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 So for you as a vocal instructor yeah. and as a, not just an instructor, but as a singer, as a professional, right? Cause you, you're, you're very much involved in both sides of the equation, the education, but also the artistry. What for you constitutes a sound being wrong? If it hurts. Okay. I would agree with that. I would agree with that entirely. Um, if it hurts. So if the vibrato is wrong, I re I'm really judgy about the vibratos. Because okay, that tells sure. a lot about the voice placement. Mm, interesting. Like the speed, the pitch of the vibrato, because it's a pitch thingy, but it's also an airflow thing. So, mm -hmm. um, but sometimes the pain, I cannot know. Like I have, I, I had colleagues, friends that I was with, in bands with, they were sounding so good. But after the, after the show, they were always in pain. And I was like, How come you're in pain? And then whoop, six months later, not, not, uh, nods, have to quit the band, have to get a surgery, one, one mm -hmm. year of uh, voice therapy to get back on track, canceling all their career for a year. Like, it's crazy. Sometimes you sound amazing, but it hurts. That's yeah. wrong. But I, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell. So my students, first class, I always tell them, you, it's a two communication, like, I'm hearing stuff for sure, but you are feeling the stuff. So you have to mm -hmm. like keep me posted. Like, is it comfortable? Do you feel a little like irritation that you're about to cough? Or, you know, sometimes it's mm -hmm. because pain is such a big word when I say, does it hurt? Like people are so used to, I don't know, like big, like real pain, you know, <laughs> like bigger <Yeah>. pain. <laughs> like mm -hmm. girls, it would be like, cramps or like you know like stomach problems or i don't know a, a knee that really hurts or a back there so it's not that much of a of pain so uh -huh. sometimes people just continue to live with that because it's a small pain but this is too too big mm -hmm. yeah so, so this so would be and the vibrato and the i mean you're just talking about the tone or like the interpretation as well what would be bad just Just, just all of it. Yeah. So, so many, so often I hear, uh, people say that's wrong. That's, that's wrong. This is wrong. And uh, like, um, I'm always interested like semantically what they mean by wrong. Um, I what mean, if their it's nasal, if it's stuck is. in the nose, this is wrong. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm What's... like that, I'm just, uh, if you're holding your note mm -hmm. and then you're pinching your nose and it changes your your note that means there's a percentage of your voice stuck in your nose it's not coming yeah. out of your your mouth like like uh, 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 uh. this is ugly this is very bad <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. And I yeah. do have exercises to to sing through the nose, but it's just to warm up like a resonance. And then I'm teaching how to keep the resonance, but then a hundred percent out of the mouth, not in the nose anymore. Because yeah, you yep. need to resonate here, but you but it's like it's like the nose is like a bridge, but people get stuck on the bridge and they don't get to the island. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, like no, no, no. Just go through it and then mouth. Like exactly. <laughs> there very are very fast. To go. No traffic. There are a lot of there, are, and that that goes back to what I was talking about earlier, which is that oftentimes we'll give our students things that are just a way for us to get to where we need to go. It's not where we want to stop. Exactly, you know what I mean? Exactly. So I, um, I'm yeah. But you have to make huge. sure, like, people sometimes they're like, what? You're going to make me sing from the nose? I don't want to sound nasal. No, I just want to remove your breathiness. <laughs> but then, exactly. And then we're going to work on. So there's, like, first class. I hear it so, so fast. At the first class, first class is the diagnosis. And I'm like, hmm, okay. So that's going to be the program. And, like, it's all in my head. <laughs> it's like mm -hmm. 12 yeah. years of experience. Uh, now I'm much yeah. faster. <laughs> Less, lesson number one with 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 uh, my students is almost always like me poking and prodding their voice and hearing oh, yeah. what's going on and then and then going from there. Um, yeah. You know, which is and, and my you know, for me, like my one of my favorite things about being a harsh vocalist is that like. Really, I, I tell my students that there are two rules, right? I tell my students a couple of things. One, there are two rules. The first is that the, the sound you're creating has to sound cool to you and your audience. And sometimes people will be like, I don't care what other people think. And it's like, yes, you do. You do. You would not be sharing it on the internet if you didn't care about what other people think. So stop it. I'm never going to believe when somebody <laughs> says they don't care what others think there. I will never believe that. And then number two, it has to feel, it has to, it has to um, be comfortable in the moment over long periods of time. And it can't change the quality of your speaking voice, which is like, I guess that's three, but I combine it into two. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's interesting. I have a very similar conversation with my students. I say, I say an amazing sound, with the wrong feeling doesn't matter exactly like like it, it, i don't care how cool you sound does it feel proper because if it doesn't well then what are we doing right so mm -hmm. one, one thing my students often get annoyed with uh, they're they're annoyed in an in in an understanding way but i'm always like what did you feel what did you sense describe the sensation where was the sensation oh yeah i remember Talk to my two lessons yeah <laughs> I'm like eh. because <laughs> i don't know yeah they have to they have I can hear them just like you said, I can hear them, but I can't feel what they feel. So, yeah, um, that's very important. But anyways, I'm rambling now, so I'll sh I'll shut up. OK, so I think so. Coming coming back on Spirit Box, um, I feel I could listen to that kind of rock music like it, it is pop. Like the melodies are really catchy. She comes back like the structure, the songwriting structure of the melodies like. The hooks are coming back, uh, and the yeah, it's very good. It's very yeah, good. and you know, interestingly enough, um, a lot of their like the opening riff that goes like I don't remember it entirely, but like it goes da 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 so obviously on that tempo on that beat da 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 it's like very metal, very like metal core. But if we were to take it and do it like now it's more like you know bar rock yeah that's true or if you you keep it as it is and you just do it with a synth mm -hmm. you could do it like a little funky disco <laughs> you, you could you know you totally i i, I should do a talking, remix <laughs> that would be that would be sick because i'm t like uh, from you, I have learned that I don't know shit about disco, and it's a much wider world than I realized. <laughs> it's a, but you're right. It totally, it those notes would totally work, and like more of a disco vibe, a disco beat, and it would probably sound pretty cool too. Like imagine like a, like um, like a like this may not be the best artist. Feel free to be like, oh, there's somebody better, but like a Dua Lipa vibe, Spirit Box mix. I think that could be cool. People might get yeah, mad. Yeah, yeah, because like she she has like that dark tone, like mezzo. Mm -hmm. oh. Mezzo sound that Dua Lipa has too. So, anyways, but yeah, uh, I feel it's like a challenge. I should, I should do, I should do a remake of this. Okay, just hey, keep... it's up to you. Yeah, it's maybe not the screaming part yet. Uh, I need to practice so much more <laughs> than I have been. But you're making progress. You're making progress. But yeah, let's um, let's okay, see where this goes. We're it's a short song. Done. Let's just go until the end. Yeah. Yeah. Dying sun! 
Gwen! What? I climb the altar and I climb on Christ's God! Circle with me! We 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 got we got some French, so we know <laughs> we know. <laughs> Whoa! It sounded if How if did she now, t- it? like she was like scream note, scream note, scream like in the same sentence, like just going towards like the scream and the pitch and the scream and the clean voice. The trick is the vocal break. Vocal break. The, tri- the trick is the vocal break. So if you listen to a lot of her screams, <clears throat> what you'll notice is that the tone of her voice underneath is very like airy like falsetto we head voice. She's doing so, the scream with the head voice. No way. Yeah, yeah. So like it, it's interesting I just had this exact same lesson wow. with one of my students before the, the lesson before. So mm-hmm. w- one way and you can do this with a lot of different types of screams, but um she builds very much on a false chord sound, which is a lot of a lot of what I do. And as we've talked about, I think these this binary of false chord and fry is too simplistic, but it's a very common avenue to get there. So a lot of what we do, like like I have a student after, this is way after, you know, they've gone, the student can go, uh, uh, ooh, uh. they'll do, uh, 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 I, I, it's gonna all be yours. And what you get is you get a scream where <laughs> the, the connectivity of the vocal cords is very separate from the generation of the distortion. And you can uh, do the two sounds at the same time and you can almost hit it like a switch. Like if you go like, and it sounds terrible when you do that, but you could, you know, you know, it's like a yodel, yodel, but with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, this is, this is part of the reason why, this is part of the reason why when I have a student reach out to me and they're like, oh yeah, I'm classically trained for 15 years. I've got two performance degrees. I'm like, all right, here we go. Because they've spent so much time getting rid of the vocal break. And I'm like, yo, we need that back. <laughs> mm-hmm. We need th- we need that back. And it can be really hard when you've trained yourself to not have that vocal break. You've eliminated it from your muscle memory. And I'm like, OK, you know, uh, 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 and it's it's really important. But um, yeah, that's that's the key. And part of the part of the reason. And it's actually interestingly enough, this scream that she's doing. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most common ones that people hurt themselves with because imagine you have and this is this is part of the reason I actually wanted to bring you on um, is because if I have a student who can't do this uh, without squeezing their 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 vocal cords and getting pain in their neck. Yeah, there's no, they have no business at that point doing screams. Mm. So if you can't uh, uh, like like before the call, I was doing some head voice notes. And you were like, oh, those sound pretty good. And I'm like, yeah, but I can't turn them into music. And that's fine for metal vocals. Like if you I can think create you like could, a, if you can like, be like really easily, but OK. <laughs> See, well, I appreciate the faith you have in me. Um, but, <laughs> um, you know, if like you have to you you have to. If you're going to do screams like this, you mm-hmm. have to be like, you know, ah, ah. well, like our shared student, um, uh, Pierre. Yeah. Right. Um. Um, we have a couple who's of actually in your students, part of t- yeah. that's true that's true but uh the one who's uh um from europe i think he's no in montreal um oh yeah, he's yeah, near yeah, you. yeah the one in um, quebec yeah part of the reason i i actually i was like yo so like you need to 
uh, we need to get you singing higher notes a little bit more comfortably. And I've run out of options because I am mostly a harsh vocalist. Go talk to Verona. And so this is this is why this is one thing that I, I really want people to understand with harsh vocals and why I, I think people are liking having you on these podcast things is because harsh vocals are an entire discipline. And much of the time they build on what we do with our clean voices. Mm -hmm. So if you can if you can't sing without pain. How are you going to scream without pain? Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah what did can. you think of the sound? Like, what did you think about? Because, um, you know, you you probably noticed she had multiple different screams and tones going on in there. Yeah. So I mean, what, uh, what are your thoughts just about what you heard? I would need to listen to it again. Because I was we just can. like, we got now you just explain how she's flipping. And I'm like, OK, I get it. I don't I couldn't do it. But like. It makes more sense now. That you're actually, yeah. she's actually flipping from head voice, chest voice, like, uh, so that what's, that's what really like stood out when I was listening to it. And then, uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, I don't know. It's just impressive. I, <laughs> you want to listen to it again? We can oh, listen yeah, to it yeah. again. Let's People would love that. To it again. Yeah. 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 It's so, it's, it's really good. Okay. The ending again. Okay, 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 okay. So that that scream was kind of higher pitch. I can hear it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and one thing that I always tell my students once they're ready to learn this is like, imagine being angry. Right. <laughs> like, like, obviously, we don't have to like we don't have to like open up like our baggage here on the Internet. But like if you've ever been so mad, you're yelling at the top of your lungs. Nobody yells like this. How could you do that to me? You broke my heart. Nobody does that. They go. <laughs> They go up, they go up, they go, how could you fucking do that to me? I gave you everything, ah! right? You know, our voices go up. Oh, yeah. And so that's that's naturally what we want to do. So a lot of times when we are doing, this falls under the, the realm, obviously, of pitched screams, right? Screams where we do hear vocal tone underneath. We can hear, We can, you could sit down if you wanted, you could find the note she's, she's basing this on, on a piano. Pitched scream, right? But, that's why we call it mm, that. Okay, but... So you're sure that she's using the head voice? Because if it's like that energy, it would have been her belt, no? So, her well, this is this is where we might, this is where we might use terms a little bit differently. If I take that scream, yeah, yeah, the power of a dying song. Okay, that's head, yeah, yeah, okay. What yeah, I, that's head voice, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where you base it. And then another thing to think about with harsh vocals is that they are inherently messy. They are inherently messy and they are in, they carry a lot of the fingerprint, especially when we're getting uh, into harsh vocals. They carry a lot of the fingerprint of our natural voice. So for some people like like if you have a vocalist like uh, there's this guy named Matt Honeycutt in a band called Kublai Khan and he's much more in his chest. He's like he's doing a lot more like you will never seek to seek validation. And so he's uh. but then you have people who are much higher. So. Mm. When you're starting, usually the vocal break in the head is the place to start. But there's there's room to be flexible once you gain gain some mastery. You know what I mean? I would be very interested in this type of scream because I have a real like a big ease with my head voice. So maybe next class. <laughs> now, yeah. Well, we gotta we gotta get the we gotta get the the first step is getting you doing this comfortably. Hey everybody, my name is Verona. <laughs> I like pizza. <laughs> okay, so the next, uh, okay, I have to work on that. So, so the opening uh, on the third podcast, that's going to be like that. Let's try. Hell yeah. Um, have to practice. Okay, now, so so yeah, let's keep going. Uh, so that Look at was, that face. You paused at the, you paused at the perfect moment. And, and actually, this is something cool to talk about as well. So look at, look at like how this is, this is where things get a little different with metal vocals. Because like one thing that often you don't want to do in singing is push your jaw forward look at that jaw look at that jaw you know what i mean it is forward and she's got like that like like she looks like she's disgusted you know and her like her her lips are turned down her bottom lip is pushed out that would be terrible for clean singing but god damn does it sound good i mean it's um, not necessary with the screen <laughs> exactly yeah you it's it's in singing in clean singing there's why would you ever do that? You'd never need to. 
But with this, it's really helping her access those lower places of her screen. Hmm. Um, interesting. So yeah, interesting. Like you can you can see a lot of people when they do screams, they want to close up their mouth. But if you were to imagine her not making that that shape with her lips, there's a lot of space in there. There's a yeah. lot of space in her mouth right now. You know. Anyway, just something mm -hmm. interesting. You paused at a great great spot. So. <laughs> And then after that section, do you think she changes the scream technique? Well, let's see. Oh yeah, big oh, big time. That okay, okay. I know. I got the altar and I climb on places. Yeah, that was low. That is yeah. So, this is a really cool thing. This is a really cool thing about harsh vocals as well. So that I wouldn't call a pitched scream, but oh, okay. a lot of the way, yeah, because like I couldn't sit down and I could I couldn't find the note that's under there, right? Mm. And this is one of the really cool things about harsh vocals is that oftentimes to create a lower or a higher scream, we don't have to do a lot with our like laryngeal placement. We can do like so if I if I do this, hey guys, what's going on? My name is Mark and I like pizza. Like I wouldn't call that low. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my vocal cords and it's gonna seem lower. So, hey guys, what's going on? My name is Mark and I like pizza. And the reason it sounds lower now is because there's it's 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 just flappy open boominess. Mm -hmm. So okay. a lot of the times we can change the the now sometimes you are gonna drop your larynx, but we can change a lot. So if I take, you know, if I take yet I found my yet I found my boo. Like a lot of the way that I changed that was mostly in my lips and my jaw, and then a little bit in the larynx I mean, too. If you drop so, the jaw, the larynx drops down almost automatically. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's very. I I don't even know if it's possible to. I can, but I I can, but it's like you have to think about you know, it if you want to keep your larynx uh, high. Yeah, yeah, and this kind of goes back to what you were talking about. It's okay. It I I have to pause because a lot of people always misunderstand me when I say this. I'm not saying don't move your larynx. I'm saying you often don't have to use the larynx as your main control mechanism and shove it down as far as you no, can go. No, no, no. You can do you can do a lot of work getting low here, mm -hmm. here, and then by non-voicing your scream, and then finish sprinkle the seasoning on top of the dish with your laryngeal placement. That's what I'm saying. Does that make sense or do I sound fucking crazy? Makes sense. I think. Okay, I mean. good. <laughs> well, and you can kind of see it like this way as well. So if I do like a single note, right? E what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this note sound darker and bigger without dropping my larynx, right? So e it's going to be the same pitch though. So e all of that, my larynx maybe moved a little bit. It moved so down. It didn't I'm move getting down. Yeah, remember, I'm not saying don't move your larynx. Okay, how do I explain this? It's just um, you don't have to think. Okay, yeah, because I, I understand what you mean. Like some students, when you tell them lower your larynx, they lower it so much that it actually hurts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you don't have to think about it. Just by dropping the jaw, just know that it's going to do the job for you, I think, a little bit. Yeah, and so I can do the majority of the work here, Yeah. right? So... Uh, ew. and then if I want to I can add a little bit ew. More, yeah. Yeah. but what we want to do is we want to put in harsh vocals anyway we want to do 90% of the control of whether or not it sounds low or not here yeah. and then use this later use this later so that's that's what I'm trying to get at hopefully mm -hmm. that makes sense I don't yeah, know yeah, I kind of feel like maybe I confused the point yeah, yeah, yeah. okay cool mm -hmm. <laughs> cool um but yeah, so it's it's really interesting how she drops the voice, she opens up here, and we get this like crazy deep tone. It's really, really cool. And she's gonna do more stuff too. Very interesting. Did you hear how she did drop her larynx on that word, the ever? Yeah, yeah. She if you, if you, uh, I told you the e vowels were cheating them. 
So that's a perfect example. The example, because if you ever, if you ever, if you ever sleep, uh, I don't have the lyrics anymore. But you hear the difference? Like she's not saying eh, she's saying oh yeah, uh, uh yeah, uh uh. And I that, think it sounds great. I love that part. Yeah, because otherwise, actually, that, yeah, it would have been if you ever. Eh, <laughs> it's like annoying. So yeah, I just wanted to. That's an example of what I was telling earlier about the vowels. I mean, I can I can give you a second vowel ah. Mm. Ah is the other mm. one that she's cheating a lot, so all all ta or like all, so she's saying instead of ah we're saying ah oh, ah. Oh. That's it. Mm. But the a is the yeah, more yeah. the most obvious that people usually mistake, but in French people mistake a lot the ah because we have like clean ah, so we have to cheat them a oh. little more. American. Like oh, <laughs> <laughs> interesting. It's it's crazy how much accents like decide how you learn to sing. Like it's like I don't teach someone from Denmark the same way I teach somebody from New Jersey. Mm. You know, it's like, well, fundamentally I do, but we have to do different like tone stuff. We have to do different vowels. We have to do different exercises. So it's it's really interesting how that you're right. It makes a huge difference. Me, I always say my favorite is the British accent. Because they got the twang, but they got the vertical, yes. the verticality yes. that I want. So it's, it's forward, but it's round at the same time. Brilliant. I agree. I agree entirely. Like if you think about like the like the like the TV British accent, not like the news, like BBC one, but the more like, you know. Well, I'm not going to do it. They're all nice. I love people. them all. <laughs> I yeah, want to move I've, there. I've never had a bad experience, <laughs> but I uh, and it's I actually just recently had this conversation with one of my students, she's British. And she was like, uh, and she was like, um, how much we were practicing just this sound. Like we were talking about this, eh, uh, uh, right. Yeah. And she's like, how much twang should I do? And I was like, your voice is perfectly twangy enough, actually. Yeah. You're there. So just don't change anything. Just, just growl through the shape of your speaking voice. And you're gonna, and sure enough, she was like, yeah. and she was like, oh, that's easy. And I was like, yeah, benefit the like benefit all of, of my accent. favorite yeah. singers are from <laughs> almost all like 80 percent of my favorite singers are from the uk or like yeah because i don't know the place is just marvelous and us french it's, like really the is. twang like fr like french people can french canadians we have a little bit more twang because canadian accent is like really twangy and mm -hmm. but like french from france there's no twang it's all in the throat and it's all like <sighs> but like N it's like they're and do speak you don't open their mouth as much so it's like a huge step for uh, people from france but yeah so it's very interesting yeah accents it really is i remember now listen i'm not going to talk to you about french because you know a million percent more than me <laughs> um but i do remember i i do i do notice when i've had students like when i have students from from your area from canada it does sound a lot brighter and when i have students from actual france it almost sounds like they're like either in their throat or sometimes I don't know if it's a regional thing like talking into their lips. Uh, oh, maybe oh yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. You know, it's, they're keeping it really small mm. and cute. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> it sounds great when you're reading poet poetry, you know. But like, oh, that's true. To, yeah, uh, that's to true. Sing, but that's I, true. I love it. I love my French students. They're always like, so uh, it's. It's such a like the before and after like a couple of months is like even their speaking voice they speak so much louder and the yeah mm. but uh, anyway so hey she's really good Courtney Laplante she is she has a French Courtney name where's yeah. she from <laughs> she's Canadian she's Canadian I don't remember where um but Spirit Box is yes yeah, the whole band is from Canada ah. but I don't not not one of the French speak, uh, speaking uh, areas um, no no but I, mean, I don't remember. Not yeah pronounced. that's there's french oh yeah it definitely is for sure um let's let's round it out because there's one more really cool section to talk about okay Is she 
flipping in head voice there, do you think? Oh yeah, most yeah, definitely. Okay. Most wow. definitely. And so it's like this is a scream. So that's from that sound? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's where the majority of the time it's going to come from. And this is a this is a a really easy scream to make the sound of, but a very difficult one to do right because like this really builds on what I was talking about before. If you can't like do and again, like to be a good screamer, you don't have to be a good singer, but you have to be relaxed, right? And so if a student can't go like uh without tension in their throat, yeah. then you know, and even even like this technique, um this technique it's also one that can wear you out kind of quickly. So it's not one like that, like she's doing it just for this specific spot, just in this performance. Like I would not make this my main vocal type. You wouldn't catch me doing this like across a whole album. I would do it in specific spots and in specific moments. Um, you know, are there any, are there any uh, like singing techniques that are kind of similar to that where it's like, Hey, this is really cool, but you probably don't want to do this for a whole show. Maybe just big moments in a couple of songs. It all depends of the singers. Mm, okay. All depends of the like what's your because we all have like more comfortable placements. That's true. Like a That's belter true. would be more comfortable belting than doing fo like head voice falsetto. That would mm -hmm. because it's usually singers that are really really like always belting everything. It's just they're their head voice usually is like really breathy and that kind of can hurt the throat on the long, like after a couple of times and they kind of lose their voice. But me, for True. example, my head voice is so trained and like my lows are good. So it's like, it's my big belt. I really have to be in the zone and I have to be, I don't know, no acid reflux. And cause this is my most, cause, cause my body just loves my mixed voice and head voice so much. It just wants to change automatically. Uh -huh. So if I don't want to crack, I really have to, it's, it's going to be too, like, I need to be in the zone, you know? So, but sure. sometimes I, I did shows that it was all belting. So, I mean, I, I, I think it depends on the singer, but sometimes if I'm in the zone, I can stay in the zone for two hours. <laughs> But I need to get yeah. in the zone. <laughs> yeah, that's, so I think it that's depends. Very depends. Yeah, that's 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 very intuitive, and it's it's a it's a good thing for not just me, but like all singers and aspiring singers to remember is that like you're just we're all built different from each other, and so for me, I'm one of those singers that uh, you know uh, that you're talking about. Where like if I had to, now I would never by choice perform or go into the studio without warming up. Mm -hmm. But if I had to, I could go into the studio and I'd be very comfortable being like, you know, hey, yeah, do, 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 yeah. but like something like a little bit more reserved, a little bit more like soft and not like, you know, pushing the door open. I would really need to warm up into that into, you know, even sing like, you know, da, 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 da. like that. I would be like, okay, I would have to like interesting. take so some you're time the opposite and think of me. about it. So like everything soft yeah. and round. You have to be careful because you can like what get tired more easily. If uh, I haven't run into that in a long time, but like I'm at the point where like I can do a pretty long studio day and be pretty fine by the end of the day. But I will say that when I back in the day when uh, Kardashev uh, released an album called The Almanac and I was like, oh, I have to sing again. Whoops. I've been neglecting again. my singing. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd been, we've talked about this on the channel before, but I had, yeah. I had neglected my singing voice for years. I definitely like really had to do a lot of warming up and a lot of scales and a lot of retraining my voice or else I would like after tracking one song, I'd be like, I got to take a break. I got to go sit quietly for like 20 minutes. And it took a long time. It took a long time for me to kind of, kind of get back to the point where I could get in front of a microphone and, and sing comfortably. So and we have to and it was it was yeah. no please go ahead i'm just uh I just something that also like people need to understand that it's it's like each song is a different workout it's like a different exercise and you have to 
become com- become comfortable in the exercise. It's like a song is like mm-hmm. a squat and the other one is a deadlift and the other one is like they're all different. So yes, of course, the more you learn songs, the more like movements you're gonna be comfortable in. So sometimes you can sing a song you've never sang and it's gonna sound pretty good because it's it kind of is similar to another one that you already trained. But It mm-hmm. would still sound better with practice also. So, because I'm, I'm saying this because the last days I've been like, just for fun, I've been live streaming a lot on TikTok, like two, three hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Just, just for fun because I'm kind of, I want to promote my French album and TikTok, TikTok is very good to like, I don't know, you, you, go, you go live and they just pitch your life to people in your, in your state. So it's like a good way to mm. get fans, you know? So I'm doing that. It's my little, and it, it's go, it goes, it's going very well. So I'm just taking special requests of songs I've never sang, never sang. Whoa! And I'm just, and I'm playing the piano at the same time. So it's like, okay, it's just like I'm reading the chords, I'm singing the songs. It's like it's a challenge. It's a boot camp. I'm like, okay, but the more I do it, like some songs, I'm like, mm, that was a wrong choice. Like I went into this placement, and I shouldn't. I should have. Like you have sometimes some songs that. I did it. I, it's not perfect. It's a live stream and I'm just like, and, but some, some are like, oh, that was a, like my instinct went and it, it worked. And sometimes like, oh, mm-hmm. my instinct, it didn't work. Like I should have do an, I should have done another vocal technique on that part. So anyway, so it's just like, mm. it's not a concert. It's a, I'm just jamming and chatting with people. So, but like a concert, you have to train every single song and you have to be, You have mm-hmm. to train them a lot. Like it's a, yeah, it's like a choreography. So it's, it becomes second nature. So when you're, you have the stress and you want to interact with the audience, well, you don't have to think about the songs because it's already in your body. Yeah, that, w- that, mm-hmm. that was it. That yeah. Was it for me. <laughs> that's what I wanted that's, to add. You know, building, that, building our set for uh, Euroblast, w- which we're playing in October. So yeah. if you're in Germany or a surrounding country, come see. <laughs> um, You know, we think about I've never really thought about each song as a different workout, but that's a really good analogy. I think that's perfect because like, you know, if I have one song that's going to work me really hard in this way, I'm going to put a song after that. That's going to let that part of my voice relax. And, you know, For sure. Let, yeah. So we def, you know, you, you definitely after a really hard song, maybe put a song that's a little bit easier. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. You just did like a, a freaking, I don't know, like the a squat and then you should, uh, well, just do like maybe a, a an arm exercise or something Some a little push-ups smoother maybe, or you know yeah yeah you just like your legs are done and like give them five minutes rest and then <laughs> so it's kind of the same yeah yeah exactly entirely that's that's a good point though and that's always just something good to remember because sometimes my students and i will talk they'll be like i can't wait to get to the point where this is not difficult anymore and i'm like well it's always going to be athletic it's always going to be Like you're never going to get to the point where it doesn't feel like work, but you will get to the point where you feel good at it and confident in the amount of work it takes. And you'll be, you'll be more efficient with that work. But like, I don't think anybody ever gets on stage and they're not having to think about the job they're doing. Yeah. Does that make I, sense? Yeah. Yeah. It, does, it's, it really makes sense. Like, yes, there's the emotion, but you're still doing an art and the, an art is, technical like it has like technical points and emotions the mm. the balance between the two the two that makes it like super nice if you're just in the emotion it can be interesting and but pitch might go wrong and like sometimes so uh, <laughs> you know that's so, never happened to me so, yeah, that's uh, never happened to me what i don't know <laughs> yeah it happens to me too like it does happen yeah. like the perfect balance would be both you know And um, yeah, what do you think about pitch? Because I got, I have a lot of students who tell me, oh, when will I stop thinking about the pitch? And I'm like, I'm thinking about the pitch all the time. Yeah. Oh, I have a lot of thoughts on pitch. <laughs> But a it's lot like of thoughts on when pitch. you're singing, um, not when you're screaming, but when you're singing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think that that's, that's, you know, when I say I neglected my singing voice, so I had to learn how to do it. Pitch was the main thing I had to learn how to do again because really? pitch is... Pi- Yeah, pitch is controlled by muscle. You know, um, pitch pitch is muscle. You've got you've got muscles that control the length and the the thickness of your vocal cords. And if you don't use them, 
they lose coordination, right? Mm-hmm. And so I I don't I don't there are some people that are just absolute beasts with pitch and maybe they don't have to think about it, but for me um as you know, someone who unfortunately does have to sing clean, um, you know, fairly frequently. Um, Not yeah, if I, if you I, have a great voice. Don't say that. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I, I, uh, I, when I say unfortunately, it's like, it's cause I'm a lazy piece of shit. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, um, you know, I do, there, I don't think there's ever a point where I will stop thinking about or stop trying to focus on pitch because if I take if I take too much time away from it I notice a difference my pitch act like for me personally if I take like three weeks only focusing on screaming or just not doing what I should with I will notice a difference in like three weeks with my pitch accuracy it won't be terrible but it will be enough that I'm like "Mm, yeah I wouldn't want to take that to the studio um but also with that I also think that people get way too judgy and way too harsh on themselves with pitch like there's this whole like 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 people will like like go into like conniptions about pitch and i'm like yo like is pitch important absolutely should we have accurately accurate pitch yes is someone a bad singer because in one live performance they hit more flat notes than they normally do no like who cares yeah, like there's, there's so much so, like self yeah there's so much stuff happening like did you have too much reverb in your ears or did you have no reverb like when I have too much reverb, mm-hmm. I'm flat. When I have no reverb, I'm sharp. I need the perfect amount. <laughs> like, yeah. Reverb. And I mean, like, yeah, it's it, it, it's it's interesting, too, because we give ourselves so much grace with like other things. Like if you're sitting down at the keyboard and you're typing and you hit a wrong key, you're not like, I should just stop typing. <laughs> a piece of shit. If I. Yeah. And like if I was to see. If I was to see somebody who's a professional data entry worker make a couple typos, I wouldn't be like, they're a fake. They're a fraud. Fuck them. You know, I would be like, oh, they're using muscles, which are organic and imperfect. But like if if a singer like oftentimes I'll I'll hear online or even with students, they'll be like, oh, yeah, he's not a very good vocalist. And I'm like, why? And they're like, well, look at this performance. He he this this chorus was flat. And I'm like. Obviously, that's not what we want, but like, why does this decide the totality of who he is as a singer? One bad chorus in one show. Like, homie, chill out. <laughs> you yeah, know? I, I mean, um, if you have 30 examples and it's always like off. Yeah. Then that's something. That's something. Then, but, yeah. But yeah. And it's the same for divorce cracks. I think it's even worse. Like Mm -hmm. my students, they get so like (gasps) into their heads if their voice cracks and like, oh my God, like I'm the worst singer in the world. But like voice cracks are just protecting you because you gave too much air. So it's like, it's like your power bar protecting you to not get hurt. So it just like, Mm -hmm. it flipped, kind of flipped, not aesthetically, not artistically into your head voice but like without you wanting it, but it's to protect yourself. So I'm like, it can happen. You can be out of breath. So like Christina Aguilera, she's like, she's great, but sometimes, oh, she cracked. Yeah, it can happen. She might be tired. She's not breathing pro- properly, stressed, but like all of the other performances are great. So we can like, it. it's okay. You don't want to crack live, yeah. so you're going to have to train. But like, even if it happens, it happened to me live. It happens to all the professional singers I know, like, It does happen. And it's as it's I do the I I give the typing thing. Me, it's like piano, a piano player. Would you be really angry at him Mm -hmm. if he just or him or her? If he just like press the the wrong note and just get back to it? No, we might not even notice it. But it's as stupid. Mm -hmm. A voice crack or a pitch thingy could be as stupid as just like hitting the wrong note and just get back to it. But we would be most more forgive like we would forgive the piano player more yeah the singer it's like it's like this interesting balance like we have to i think it's important to strive to improve mm-hmm. and to be accurate i think it's also important to give yourself some grace and not accept perfection and i think it's also at times okay to use the tools that are available to us to help us where we need like sometimes my students and and I'll always say this. I'll put myself on the chopping block. I do not care. Um, my students will sometimes be like, oh, yeah, like anybody who uses pitch correction is a uh, fraud. And I'll be like, homie, I've used pitch correction. And they're like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I'll pull up the song and I'll show them the note. I'll be like, listen, I had done a full day of harsh vocals. 
I didn't know I was going to be doing clean singing. All of a sudden, they asked me to go into a booth and I'm supposed to hit a C5 in my head voice on one note. And uh, I'll be real. I didn't want to. <laughs> I was like, no. And it's like reverbed in the back. It's a descant. It's, you know, it, 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 we have a song where in the back I'm like, oh, never come back. But it's like obviously better than that. That. Come. Yeah, it, like it was a little bit flat. And uh, everyone's like, okay, try again. And I'm like, don't we have technology? Couldn't I just scooch this? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, ah, I'm out of there. <laughs> but do you use it live? I just wouldn't sing that part live. Or I would sing it different. Okay. Um, but or like I would your sing it different. Your least, because would you use a live auto tune? Probably not. Um, probably not. The only That's time the I would. I don't like. The only time. I, Exactly. Exactly. The only time I would ever do that is if like, well, I don't think I would, because if I was like so sick that I couldn't sing, then I would have bigger issues. You know what I mean? Um, but like, here's a really good example. So we're going to like, like I just mentioned, we're going to play in Germany. I know that that's the first show I've played since 2016. So there are some parts that I'm singing differently. I'm rewriting them and I'm just okay. singing them differently. Yeah, for sure. And oh, dude, I feel great about it. Uh, I've had a couple students be like, aren't you worried that somebody will get mad? And I'm like, if they get mad, they can work through it on their own. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so I think I, I think pitch is really important, but I think sometimes I wish we could take away the stigma and the like self-hatred and the judginess around it too, because it's just, we, it's like, we could all just be having fun and be having a good time versus being mad at ourselves and each other. You yeah, know what for I mean? sure. But That's I mean, it's still, it's music, so... It is all about pitch. Like, would you? It's like your guitar player needs to play the good notes, and the guitar needs They're, to be yeah. tuned. So, like, the singer yeah. needs to be in tune. Like, and the I yeah. think it's much more. It's like the best singers I know are not. I mean, not that the best. How can I say the more on pitch are the back mm -hmm. vocalists. They are machines. <laughs> They are. The interesting best. they interesting they have like an auto tune in there like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's crazy wild. and it's i wild. know some people and i don't know if they're pitch perfect or something but yeah usually they they end up being back vocalists because the back vocalists are like the guitar player and the bass they have to be very like if everything is at 100 percent perfect the lead can allow himself or herself to be 90% perfect if all the rest is really solid that's fascinating yeah it's, yeah. it's still gonna I sound mean, good but if the back vocalists are a little flat and the other one is you have three one is a little flat one is a little sharp and one is okay pff, forget it, it's gonna sound awful that's gonna sound terrible awful I'll sound terrible yeah and then the lead yeah. is gonna be oh, and the guitar is not in tune I mean it, it, we're, we're doing music oh yeah It's a hard thing to describe, you know, like finding the balance of viewing something as very important, but also not like, you know, banging your head against the wall when you mess up. Like I, I, I have students sometimes, you know, when we're when we're doing screaming and we're going for like a very specific guttural, like a, you know, and um, they're they're not hitting it. And I can see them like like really getting upset. And I'm like, okay, let's I'll be like, let's pause. What? is the bad thing that's going to happen if you don't hit it on this next try. Try. We're going to do the exercise. We're going to try to do it properly. Let's say it goes wrong. What bad is going to happen? There's no answer. They don't have anything because nothing bad is going to happen. The FBI is not going to kick down their door. They're they're not going to spontaneously like, you know, yeah, internally bleed. So like you can think something's important without having the dismal like self-hatred and finger pointing that I sometimes see in the music world. And it's to me, they're, they're very separate things. You know, um, I can think, I can think something's important without letting it overtake my emotional well being. I guess. Yeah. I think it's like, I mean, it's like athletes, like if you don't do yeah. your best time, it, it, it sucks, but like, you're not going to die. Like don't die about it. So, but yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's hard on the mental and I, I get it, but Me as a coach, I think I'm a little harder than you. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, maybe. I think it depends. We, I think it depends. Pitch doesn't really come up in my world. Yeah, me and my exactly. students, we're just not talking about it that much. Yeah, me, I'm very like picky on the pitch. Yeah, but it, it, it really 
makes the difference. Um, but I, I have great exercises and I'm seeing progress so fast now, much faster than like when mm -hmm. I started teaching. Now I know what works and like, yeah, and, the, and it makes the whole difference. Because sometimes people often they don't like their voice and they don't know why. And like, is it the tone? Is it like, no, no, no. And they al mm. always think like 99% of the time they think it's their tone. My voice is just not beautiful. My voice is not beautiful. Mm. And then we record and I tune them with, uh, I use Melodyne. I don't know if you know the software. Yeah, uh, yeah. So Melodyne doesn't change your tone, basically, mostly. Right. If you're, except if you're singing way far <laughs> from the pitch. But if you're singing pretty much, and then I just Melodyne them and s they love themselves. So that's when I know, yeah. okay, so you didn't like your voice because you could hear that it was not on pitch like perfectly on pitch so sometimes people have good ears but it's just as you said it's a muscular thing so uh we just have to train it so it's a very nice ex exercise when i do that and i show them their voice in melodyne so they get a visual and i do do it for online uh -huh. lessons in person lessons like i show them they sleep on it and i assure you the next class they're better just that's to, a really good to tool. have a that's visual a yeah yeah so using technology to to learn to be better without it after it's a yeah that's a and i i will add one thing although that's a really smart idea sometimes i do something similar with my students where they'll do a growl and they don't think it's good and i'll be like okay record it for me real quick and then i'll take it and i'll mix it into a metal vocal a metal song and they're like that sounds cool and i'm like i told you but i will i will i will add one more thing about my view on pitch let's say uh i have a student obviously i'm not teaching them to sing but they're gonna do open mic nights to a to a group of 20 people Okay, pitch is very, very, very important, but let's not hate ourselves about it. No. Now let's say they're gonna uh now let's say they're gonna compete in Eurovision. I'm like, yo, there's no room for error. Like <laughs> so like it also kind of depends on like the 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 situation. Like if somebody was like, I don't care about pitch, I'm gonna compete against the entire world, I'd be like, maybe you I'm should. I'm gonna care sing the national anthem. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it, it also depends on the situation. Cause if I had a student and they were gonna do that. <laughs> and let's pretend I was giving singing singing lessons. I'd be like, so you know how like chill I am? Not now. <laughs> like now we got to really, because this is going to be millions of people are going to, well, I don't know about millions, but so I, I think it also kind of depends on the situation. There's like, there's a difference. Uh, we should hold ourselves to a different standards if we're like beginner and exactly. performing against exactly. and it comes 10 with people practice. versus like, yeah. Comes with practice and sometimes pitch is great in the classroom, but you have to go on a small stage and then whoop, other problems happen so you have to do it again open mic nights a karaoke those are to practice and then who oh, mm. i'm organizing for example student concerts with my students here in montreal so it's like oh, okay cool. that's a next level because everybody's prepared so it's not like an open mic or karaoke nobody cares it's like oh, it's a little more prepared parents are coming family friends are there but still everybody's here to kind of learn so it's it's a safe space so i'm like gradually increasing the the level mm -hmm. i think it's a good note yeah. to end our podcast what do you think i was just about to say i feel like that's a that's a good spot we we definitely uh definitely got off track a little bit but i think it was really interesting i yeah. think i think it's uh i think it's gonna be pretty cool so last last thing um if you liked spirit box i would definitely suggest um they're one of those bands where thankfully their whole discography is really good i personally okay. like like i personally like the stuff that came after circle with me and constance is another one of their songs i still think is really good it's a little less to my taste um but the whole discography is great and if you like this song you're probably gonna like spirit box pretty well so um nice. yeah thanks for that. checking them out During yeah yeah we'll uh we'll have to do we'll have to do some you'll have to show me some stuff here in, in a bit but do you um, think the the Cardivox community will be open to uh, discover some pop pop music? <laughs> Do you think? You know, here's the thing. I think I think the, the that that our community, the Cardivox community, is open to a lot of things. I think that the YouTube alg algorithm is a little fucking punk, um, and might not push it the same. So we okay. have to. We have to be strategic about, okay, let's do some metal. Let's get some, and then we can start pushing the boundaries. Cause I think as far as the people who view this channel, yeah, they're cool. They're cool with, with learning, whatever. I think YouTube's like, I'm not going to get my ad revenue from this video. So I'm not going <laughs> to share it with, you know, 
Um, but last thing, actually, in case this is anybody's first time seeing you, where can they find you and your music uh, and learn more about you and the way you teach? Like, just go ahead and just, you know, plug plug your own stuff here real plug quick and then we'll stuff. wrap it up. Yeah, so if you want coaching, well, it's fr it's on the Cardiovax Academy website. I don't know if my photo is there yet. True. <laughs> I... I just I just pinged our website guy today. I just pinged our website guy today and I was like, yo, what's the status? No, Anyways, yeah, yeah. So even if my photo is not there, I'm there, okay? It's uh you could you could choose to pick lessons with me in the form, contact form. Uh so that's the first thing. And then my music, I mean I'm uh I'm I'm on all um uh, all the platforms, Spotify, uh Apple Music, uh YouTube. So it's Verona, two ends. So it's like the Italian city but with double N's. For double fun. <laughs> so Verona and the, <laughs> yeah, you should find me. And on the um, social media, it's Verona Music. All social medias, you're going to find me. That's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And I'm, uh, well, I have a new, I uh, my last song was like disco, pop disco. It's very, it's a mm -hmm. good vibe. And I'm working on a French project, but I'm still going to release uh, some English stuff. So, so yeah, very excited about that. Hell yeah. Dope. Well, thank you for thank you for doing this. We'll keep doing them as long as people are enjoying watching yeah. them. And uh, as always, to the people watching, many thanks, much love. We're out.